today. Welcome back to Rocket Hunter. Today we're in Papo Forest Reserve. If you're not familiar with what we do, check out a few of the early episodes. The Native Orchid Society of South Australia has welcomed us today and they've told us that there's a few things going on. This is all new territory to me, so I'm pretty excited to check it out. Kaipo Forest Reserve is comprised of three native forest reserves, Mount Panorama, Knot Hill and Christmas Hill. Throughout these reserves there is around 20 orchids through various woodlands dominated by shrubs and ground flora. Straight up we've had a bit of success and found a shortleaf donkey orchid, or rather a small colony of them in full flower. It was traditionally a food source for Aboriginals and in 1980 it was considered more widespread and common but now only grows in two locations and is considered rare. Now if you're aware that there is around 25 to 35,000 different types of orchids in the world, the weird and wonderful shapes and colours may not come as a surprise. Seriously, duck orchid? Often where you'll find one orchid, you'll find others, be it of the same type or different species. Make sure that you have a good look around your feet before you settle down to take photos of anything. Make sure that you're not trampling anything else. They could be at different various stages of growth, there could be buds, there could be just little leaves or there could be a variety of flowers around. So make sure you take the time to have a look and make sure that you're not crushing anything. The next orchid we find is in the same vicinity and doesn't look like much but I reckon it has attitude. Sometimes nicknamed Undertaker Orchid but more commonly Black or Red Fire Orchid. We've missed it in full colour but I like it to see it in the slashing zone as it rarely responds to it, more so fire. When in full flower it's a rich pinkish red and then hardens into this charred black coloration that we can see. It grows in large colonies and often has a thick fleshy leaf. This is perfect orchid hunting territory, easy to move, easy to see, great sunlight for the photos, the open fire breaks which were fruitful before, and now moving on looking to the left we see an open woodland with a rich understory. Even from a moving vehicle we can see an array of lilies and daisies, purples, yellows, whites and blues. When you're looking for orchids, it's a bit of a catch-22. You have to know what you're looking for, but to have to know what you're looking for, you have to see it. So it always helps to get down at ground level and have a look across through the ground flora. That helps the colours and the shapes to come out. And it also works better when you've got the sun behind you, when there's uh, as little contrast as possible to distract you.
This is perhaps my favourite orchid. It's large and showy with rich colours and has a hairy stem and the labellum inspires curiosity with its rich red calli, those bumpy bits and the green comb-like structure. It's known as the King Spider Orchid in South Australia or the Eastern Mantis Orchid in Victoria. Now this is an interesting fellow. From what I can gather, the only weedy orchid in Australia. Known as the South African orchid, it looks like a glorified version of our indigenous onion orchids. It's attractive with a leafy base and purple dorsal sepal, but it's unknown how it may negatively impact on our native orchids. This is a good reason to practice hygiene. Always wash your boots with phytoclean to dislodge seed and destroy fungus that may be on them. This helps to stop the spread of weeds and diseases. It's no easy feat managing large landscapes, different opinions and requirements dictating what's right and wrong. No camping or motorbikes are a couple of the rules to minimise negative impact here at Kaipo, and horse riding and dogs on lead are for a recreational balance. Perhaps the most consistent threat in any area like this is weeds. Here we can see gorse, a high threat shrub in seed. The seed can last at least 25 years, which is a headache for any land manager. Pine escape bees from the neighbouring plantations are to be expected too. Forestry SA manages around 100,000 hectares of plantation and about 30,000 hectares of bushland for conservation purposes. Management of the native forest reserves can include weed control works, prescribed burns and monitoring activities. Prescribed burns perhaps being the hardest as it's no easy feat for environmental stakeholders to work between public perception and environmental requirements. Many of the orchids we've seen today are the result of an appropriate slashing regime, a balance of fire management and orchid conservation established by NOSA and Forestry SA. Management plans are available online from Forestry SA's website and are a great guide to looking for orchids and understanding the environment that supports them. I worry that although these forest reserves are protected by the Forestry Act, it would appear that this legislation can be lifted, however Forestry SA appears to be committed to a sustainable balance. Whilst there are records of koalas in Knot Hill, I found this little guy just outside of it and I was shocked to learn that it's reasonable to consider koalas a pest species here. Being this close to cars worried me, but perhaps I should be more worried about the condition of the eucalypt it's in. Well, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We've seen a few new things. Well, at least I know I have. Hope to bring you another episode shortly. A summer special of some of the random bits and pieces that I've been lucky enough to come across. Until then, thanks for watching and see you next time. Remember all orchids in the wild are protected by law and cannot be removed. If you find they inspire your curiosity whilst bushwalking, please do not remove them as this is a serious threat to their survival. There are plenty of orchid societies and nurseries all over Australia that would love to help you to attain them legally.